All right, guys. You guys want to blow up your back? Sorry, blow my back up. You want a mass building back workout? Try this. You want bulging lats? You want Tyrannosaurus tra traps? You guys want lats like Dorian Yates? With half the work and half fucking genetics? You want to figure out how to not work hard, get big? You want this is the shortcut channel. I don't know if anyone else sees these fucking, oh my God. These people who do like laterals. Fuck, I forgot a goddamn towel again. They do laterals and they tie the cuff to their fucking forearm. Yep. It's like, I know other people have said this before, but I'll just reiterate how fucking stupid that is. Like, unless you have a fucking injury, obviously, where you're like unable to use your hand, or you have some type of issue where you need to be able to like, there's no nothing for you to grab. You don't have the access to the ability of your hand so you can throw up through forearm, coming back from injury, whatever. But these people doing it, they're doing these like complicated setups, like, like laying down on a bench like that and like holding the fucking cables and then rolling up like while they're laying down. It's like, do you understand? Like you're taking, you're taking tension off the negative on that. Do you know what I mean? It's not a straight path. It's a path that's like, if I'm up here and then they're falling back down into me here, I'm just relaxing here and then it's like all about this contraction at the top and then relax back to here as you're laying down because the cable's down here and I'm rolling up through. Like, yes, you're getting a lot of height and rotation and like squeeze on that delt, but the negative is literally like you're, oh, and it just like pulls the arm down. Whereas if I understand tension, like, and I do a fucking regular dumbbell fucking lateral like if i understand the like we've talked about before the positioning of my body and i'm forward leaning forward in my chest my shoulders are forward as soon as i move to here i have tension and i have to control the tension back into here or i'll go so i'm rocking out and rising rising like if you need something on your forearm to understand that elbow is lifting or elbow is cracking to pull up and hand is just holding on so I'm still squeezing the shit out of my hand. I'm just leading with elbow as I get about six inches from my body when that throw happens, it's elbow lift and drag and down. It's not like zombie or, you know what I mean? So it's like you guys and girls, I see girls doing it a lot more. I've seen more and more guys doing it. If you're just trying to get variety and you're like, oh, I'm trying to hit a different head of my delt, I feel like this and this is more benefits. Like, I would guarantee you that the results you're seeing from that compared to like a dumbbell lateral are minimal at best. Like there's no, gonna be no vast improvement in development. It's not gonna be like some, oh my, my delts just got like so much bigger once I did them this way. It's like, yeah, but you can also just do it the fucking right way and understand all you gotta do is hold the dumbbell, it's really not that stressful, and do the same thing you're doing. You guys are laying down and then going, so you're getting momentum that leads you to fall back like this. So it's a lot of like hip torque, even if I'm laying down, I'm still throwing my hands up, right? Whereas I'm keeping my hip behind and I'm pushing out onto my delt all the time. My hips don't do this. I don't over rotate like that. I just push my delt out to where tension stays on it. It just sweeps away from my body, I rock up enough to throw it away. So there's always tension here. So you see people doing my style of dumbbell lateral, doing 30, 40 pounds, but they've probably done 60s before, other ways, just <laughs> So Cause you guys, you just don't get it. It's okay, you're not like dumb or something, but you're trying to find these ways to hack things, or if you just learn how to do them properly to begin with, there's no need for a hack. Like I said, with that shit, unless you have an injury, wrist is broken, finger's broken, whatever the fuck's going on, you don't need to do that shit. It's like, you're just trying to look cool in the gym. And then I see people laying on the fucking ground doing it. Or like doing front raises on the fucking ground. Are you on fucking Coke? Like, why are you laying on the ground? What kind of, what kind of tension could there possibly be when you're pulling up your, you're throwing a cable out in front of your body as you're laying on the ground and just falling back into you. And then, so I get like this, again, it's all this focus on contraction. It's like having, it's like on this press, I have no regard for like controlling negative and like understanding squeezing here and then rocking out and flexing on my pec. 
I, I'm just concerned with this, so I'm going to go. <laughs> Ooh, you know what I mean? Like, that's all you're doing. You contraction fucking contraction whores. I'm just obsessed with, like, squeezing the fuck out of everything. Like, not understanding the stretch or, like, the it, where you're settling weight, where you're pushing out of, like, just get that fucking thing off me. And my only cue when I train people is to say squeeze. Squeeze or like something along those lines of like, I don't know, flex or anything to do with like contracting. Everything is about like how hard can I contract? But you guys have forgot about the negative. And the, and the negative is just turned into, into a slower, to a releasing of contraction. Not like, I'm, a, not like a, I'm a letting weight come in and I'm expanding and holding in different body parts. I'm trying to hold this tension from a chest press because we're here. I'm say I'm super contracted here. I lock it up. So I'm trying to hold that contraction and not let it go. But you've already lost it. You lost it as soon as you let go, bend your elbow. So as soon as you bend your elbow, now you think I'm letting elbow sink. I'm squeezing into back. My weight's going back. My chest is lifting. So I'm getting expansion and then I'm able to push through again. So I'm working on different, different modalities of what my chest does and allowing like these supporting body parts or like, how do I say this? Complementary body parts to get developed to elicit a better chest workout. So like I'm bringing this down, I'm letting the hands sink, forearm, forearms kind of tense, triceps stabilizing. I'm lifting rib cage, I'm squeezing deep into my back. So while my back's contracted, my chest is up, my serratus is engaged, my rib cage is up, my chest is being stretched, my pec is being stretched, and now I can fire back out. But you miss all that when you're just trying to hold this contraction as long as you can. It's not the same thing. It's completely different. It's the same thing with bicep curl. That's why it, the fucking standing, alternating, hold one bicep up thing is nonsense. It's complete stupidity, guys. It doesn't make any sense. Like if you wanted to do like an arm, a stagnant arm hold on a bicep curl, you could literally just do one arm and you could come up here and hold. And then you could release tension. You could hold again. So that bicep's moving. Why don't we just hold a dumbbell in midair going? Like we've talked about this. It makes no sense. You're just holding contraction. Contraction is only half of the lift. There's eccentric and concentric, right? You're only focusing on the one. And the second one we mentioned that you're not focusing on is more important than the other one. Like, and you can talk to anyone about that. All you guys believe this guy's the best. Dorian Yates is the same thing. Go listen to his videos to tell you the same thing. He's more, he's more worried about the negative of the lift than he is about the contraction of the lift. So yes, he wants to get the contraction because that's part of what we're doing here. It's like saying you're a major league baseball player and you wind up and never throw the ball. So I do all this wind up and I, I just go back into my wind up. I never throw the ball. I just, I do half the thing. Oh, it would have been fast if I threw it. You know what I mean? So it's like the message is coming across from everybody People, again, are cherry picking, cherry picking information. Because they see like these other guys, these newer guys that lift, who are obsessed with contraction and not obsessed with like development and like controlling rep, reps and like expanding and moving with weight. And you see those same guys don't have much, their physiques are stiff as fuck. And they're missing body parts. They're literally missing them. Not, they're not developed. Even like, if the rest of their body is developed to like a master's degree level, their lagging body parts are at high school. And they're convinced that like, oh, you know, I'll outsmart, I'll outsmart everything, I'll just go heavier. And this whole idea, wah, that we're getting back to like this whole thing where like, if I have a lagging body part, let's say my back, for the 90% of people out there, it's their back, especially people who compete. So it's like, you've taken the first step and realized that you have a problem like fucking addict, right? Yeah. So that's a good start. But now you're gonna go to the gym and you're gonna do the staples, the staples of back improvement, which is what? Barbell row, deadlift, and some type of one arm row, right? Yep. So you're gonna go to the gym and brutalize those. You're not gonna do them better and a lot of the times people who have poor back development, their back development isn't their whole back development, it's their mid to lower. So it's like erectors, lats, 
mid trap. It's that like portion that goes below your armpit, let's say, which is like no man's land for most people. Even though the traps obviously crap, creep up into your neck, it's great. But it's like, so you're now gonna do a lift, like barbell row. So we'll go over here. Or fucking got an empty gym. So I have a problem with my lats and my back development. So I'm gonna come over here and do a barbell row. Instead of doing a barbell row with super light weight and understanding that I can get here and posture up and rock through and get full contraction by rolling up off my quad, letting my lat hang, rocking up through, I'm gonna do this. Put too much weight on there. Well, I can't, I can never get in that position and hold it and just go like this. What's that look like compared to this? in terms of back movement. There isn't any. It's fucking trap. And rear delt and like rhomboids and whatever. So why are you, if you have a poor back, don't make the part of your back that's actually developed better. Make the shit part grow. You don't need help with that. You need to change angles. And you need to understand like where you're pulling and understand like the line of pull. Like all the stuff we preach, getting your chest up, keeping your shoulders down to get improvement. Like. It's like any coach that tells you, you guys and girls out there, you, this, is, this is lacking. Your legs, your legs are bad when you just squat twice a week. You don't even know how I squat. Squat is probably the worst option because there's so much fucking room for error and there's so much, there's ways to pin weight on, other, on, on joints and just hinge. You should be telling, that, that coach should be telling you, I want you to do like one leg leg extension so you can actually focus on individual legs. One leg, one leg hamstring curl. So we're getting, each hamstring's getting the proper work. And then we're going on to like two leg shit. Hack squats. Things that take, like allow us to sink lower in the hips and like bend the knees and develop the leg. It's not like, oh, you need to squat every day now. I'm on a new program, my back needs to grow. I'm deadlifting twice a week. What? Are you going for a powerlifting meet or a fucking bodybuilding? Cause like, if my back sucked, the first thing I would think, I need to isolate it better. I wouldn't be I need to train it harder. It would be I need to isolate it better. Not just come in here blindly and fucking, oh, how much fucking weight can I put on the fucking bar and pull it up? How much weight can I do on a barbell row? Like, how much can I pick up the 200s and row them on fucking lat, on a single arm lat row and just be literally just like starting a lawnmower? You know what I mean? I saw this girl on the internet the other day, bragging that she fucking one arm rode 70 pounds. It wasn't a row, sweetheart. It wasn't a fucking row. It was, a, it was like a whip. It was like, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna, and she gets herself in this position and she just, she lets her arm hang, don't get me wrong, and then it's. That's not, that's not a row in anyone's eyes. I don't know what you're smoking or like if you think it's cool for Instagram, but this is not a row. It's not, literally. Just because you're holding 70 pounds and doing it and you've called it a row, the rest of us are like, the fuck is that? What the fuck are you doing? Like, my guess is that that person and guys are just as guilty, couldn't even properly row 40 pounds. Like fully lengthened lat, break elbow, drive chest up, arch back. Their back would go into spasm. And that's what I find with a lot of people I train on back. One, their grip tires out really quick because they're not used to they're not used to actually holding their palm on stuff. They're usually just clawing stuff and like over squeezing. But also their mid back and their lower back tightens up like a motherfucker because they've never had to stabilize or use their erectors ever. Everything is just this hunched over pull, pull, pull. There's no development of erectors. There's no other, like development of lower lat. Nothing. So as soon as those things start getting hit. Oh man, does your back cramp up when you do this? I'm like, no, because I have a strong back. I, my back cramped up doing that when I learned how to do it when I was fucking 19. It's like it haven't, hasn't happened since then. And don't get me wrong, like barbell rows were a big staple in my routine as I was like coming up in bodybuilding because I was able to do them with strict form and actually get length on the release of the bar. You know what I mean? So once you understand how to move, there's nothing wrong with a barbell row. But if you're just doing a barbell row to do a barbell row, 
not going to work out very well. The only thing that you might get by a byproduct of doing shitty barbell rows is you might actually develop erector strength because you have to hold your fucking self up with all that weight in front of you. There's nothing else that can help you. And then like that engagement in that lower mid back to keep your chest up, right? Because you don't have to do that. We force that connection when I do stuff on chest supported rows because I put my weight forward and I put chest weight on the chest pad and I'm arched in my back already engaged, pull. But all these other guys, they scoot their butt in, they lean back and they're pulling back. That lower back and erector area doesn't engage ever, right? So by a by fluke, you just doing heavier barbell rows is probably gonna develop erector strength and like make it grow, but like overall back development is gonna suffer. So you'll have these thick erectors in your back, look like a fucking, another ass above your ass, and you just have no lat. Like, so you'll have that density come out, don't get me wrong, you'll, it'll look better, but like there's no lat, you know what I mean? So you get double ass, double ass back. <laughs>